What is up everybody? I'm no Lux Given, and today we're gonna be taking a look at an extremely lucky Evela game. Evela is typically a hero that is kind of a little bit cursed for me, that stuff just winds up going wrong. And there's a few things that go wrong in this video, but for the most part, we are extremely lucky throughout this entire game, and it is a ton of fun. We get to start off by picking up a Cinderella, pretty good, and then we find a Shard of the Ice Queen to grab some evil characters. And I'm gonna lock onto this shop here as well. It doesn't have any evil characters for us. It does have one and a half animals, uh, but it also has another shard of the Ice Queen that we can use to flip something so that we're ticking down the Cinderella and finding another evil character. So generally a pretty good start to the game, and then we wind up grabbing a tie up against Peter Pan. So some nice stuff there all together. I'm going to wind up flipping over the Lonely Prince, and I find not one, but two Kitty Cup purse this turn. So obviously a fantastic start start to the game. Evela is giving all of my evil characters plus one attack. And then whenever an animal dies, which both of these kitty cup purse are, then all of my evil characters will grab another attack. So even reasonable chances that we get two slays here with our kitty cup purses going into 3.0 and some nice econ to start building this game off. Now, one of those kitty cup purses doesn't slay, and I'm not really counting this as getting unlucky. My opponent had it. We weren't winning that combat anyways. We could have potentially slayed and cracked a Humpty Dumpty, but I don't really care. We get a great pickup in this shop, a Poliwoggle. Poliwoggle on 3.0, obviously very good. I will say that this is like one of the two times in this game, this combat right here on 3.0, going to be like one of the two times that we get unlucky because this Poliwoggle isn't going to slay for us on 3.0, which would have had some big implications, though. Uh, you'll see, we're, we're still able to make some nice stuff happen with it. Don't worry. Uh, this Poliwoggle is going to put in some nice work for us. So uh, we still have both of the Kitty Cup purse as well. And then I transform the Queen of Hearts into evil, uh, or I'm sorry, into good to give it additional health. I thought that it having more health was useful than it getting some bonus attack from being an evil character, and I stand by that by that decision. I think that that is the correct call. We're going to wind up tripling up the Kitty Cup purse, and we pick up a Secret Stash, so even now if we lose a combat, we're still winning, so that allows me, that's like some luck protection, that's some copium, you know? Oh, we're, we're not getting unlucky, we're losing combats and, and getting additional gold. Uh, and then I'm gonna lock onto this True Love's Kiss, and that's where I said that it would have been really good if we were able to slay with the Poliwoggle last combat, then we could True Love's Kiss it to a five cost character here. Though it being delayed by a turn isn't the worst thing in the world. As long as we get that slay, this combat will be able to transform the Poliwoggle, flip over the Cinderella, grab another tier two treasure, and be set up very, very well. We get the 50-50 with the Poliwoggle, and from here, we should be looking to take over the game. Like I said, a little bit of, oh no, actually we win that combat there, and uh, get to keep the secret stash around. So Lady of the Lake is going to turn into a Lancelot, which I think is a pretty lucky pickup. And we also get to pick up a uh, puzzle or a skipping stone here with uh, for some bonus XP. Now, it's a little bit awkward because the secret stash isn't probably going to last us forever, but we're grabbing a treasure off the Lancelot eventually. And we also have another pair in the shop with the uh, Water Wraith. So I'm gonna pick that up. I think that that sets us up well going into 4.0. We've got some additional econ off the Kitty Cup purse. We were able to find the triple of that. We've got the Lancelot, which is going to eventually probably get us a treasure. And uh, we've got the additional econ with the Secret Stash as well, potentially going into 4.0 here. I think this is the turn that we wind up cracking the Secret Stash. My opponent with this Stag, I think, is able to deal some damage to us. Yeah, they've got a, um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, Spellweaver there. Uh, so they are able to hit us for a little bit of damage, but I won't count that one as getting unlucky because, uh, you know, you're going to lose some combat. Some opponents are just going to be more powerful than you. Um, 
but uh, overall, I think that we are in a really, really good spot for this game. I'm going to wind up picking up a Friendly Spirit, but for the most part, I'm just looking for pairs and triples right now. That is the main game plan, and I do believe, I'm not sure if I take this free roll, uh, but I do believe I wind up tripling the Water Wraith right after that. We do pick up the free roll indeed, and that will allow me to take a Sting, which is really good with the Kitty Cup Purse, but also will potentially allow me to activate Lancelot pretty soon. So Lancelot currently at 22. We're just looking for three more attack to throw on that. And what I realize is that there's another Mad Mim in this shop. So if we can triple Mad Mim, that will allow us to activate Lance, which will allow us to activate the Puzzle Rune. So Madman is really, really important for this next turn, and we get a nice lucky series of combats here that allows us to grab a tie. So now I'm just going to pick up this Madman and then basically just rolling for Madman. And if we can find that, we will grab a tier two treasure, a tier five treasure, and two bonus XP, which sounds really, really good to me. There's the Madman tier two treasure, sure, spinning wheel, I'll take it, and that will allow us to now activate Lancelot. So really really fantastic stuff here. We even get to do one more thing before this turns up. I'm going to wind up rolling into the third golden chicken. So we get to pick that up here as well, and I'll just grab it. I think that it's fine. Uh, wind up replacing the skipping stone with jumping beans. Give us a little bit more combat power. Not super important. The important thing is now we're level five. So we're level five. We're going to have an activated Lancelot here as well. And I think that we're very, very well set up to just take over this game with the bonus XP and honestly, decently large board compared to my opponents here. Lancelot's going to get in some nice hits. I think Lance grabbed the jumping beans there as well. Uh, so pretty fun stuff. And my opponent with some nice ranged units is going to wind us taking up, going to wind up taking us out here. It's just a, a weakness that we have right now with the comp, but we do get to pick up a tier five treasure. And while I will say these aren't the luckiest, uh, yeah, you can see we were supposed to lose that combat on the tracker. Uh, I think that Hand of Midas is actually a defendable pickup here. And I'm looking for two things, Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga or XP. And if I can find either of those, then that will really justify picking up the Hand of Midas and we find the XP. So I'm going to the end, probably my Cinderella here. That'll put us up to 5.2. And it'll mean that we can't do anything else with our gold for the rest of the turn. So I'm just going to wind up rolling down, even though there's probably nothing I would pick up. Even if I found a Baba Yaga at this point, I don't think I would be able to pick that up. Because uh, next turn, we're going to be level 6 with a Hand of Midas. And then we'll be able to grab an upgraded level 6 character. And... That should have us really well set up for the the ending of the game. Haven't really thought about the fact that we're Evella in a long time. Of course, we do have the Kitty Cup purse, uh, though it's not going to be a huge deal for us. And we get really good combats there as well that we're able to walk away with the tie, plus the bonus gold for my opponent's prized pig. So pretty great stuff. I roll past Lordy, though that might have been a consideration. And also up for consideration there was the Evil Twin. I wind up rolling past that one. Definitely don't want a Boom Hilda, but... I think I have to consider the Burning Beard here. I'm also going to wind up True Love's Kissing My Lance into a upgraded Boomhilda. Not the best, but I'll take it. Uh, at the very least, we're still, like, extremely strong right now. And now we just have to find some more trees and complete this comp. Or we can use the strength from the Boomhilda to potentially pursue some different angles and uh, see what else we can find in this game. But... Overall, I'm feeling really good. Rest of the lobby currently on 5.0, and we've got two upgraded level six characters. Plus, we're still spinning out some extra gold with the Kitty Cup purse when that can get its attack in. So uh, honestly, I think that we are looking pretty fabulous here. We're playing up against Puffy. They've got Hatball plus Treasure Map, uh, though I am feeling pretty good. We are gonna take a little bit of damage from the Puffy, but that's okay. Again, it's just these ranged characters, uh, a little bit of a weakness weakness of ours, and uh, I guess we were supposed to win that one, but not a huge deal. We got some life to uh, play around with here, and then I'm going to wind up picking up Empress P. It's not good with the Burning Beard that we obviously invested into, but it is extremely powerful with both of the supports that we have. So 
I think that Empress P is a good enough pickup here, and I'm kind of going to spend some time just playing tempo a little bit uh, with being able to put that in. And here I am doing some math to see just how much my supports are giving me right now, and turns out we can actually get Hercules up to 51 attack. So pretty good stuff. Now, maybe I could have put Hercules in that first slot because uh, Boomhilda just by itself is giving plus 20 and Empress P might rather like to be in front of the Mad Men. Uh, so kind of a mistake. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I have a sting. I've got a lot of different stuff going on. Uh, and you could say maybe we got a little bit unlucky there uh, that Hercules did not activate fully in one turn. Uh, but I'll still say that this was lucky that we got the Hercules and we're up against the ghost here. So it doesn't really matter. We're gonna be having a great time and I'm gonna move more into the Empress P of it all now. And I think this turn I realized that we can just throw the Hercules in that first slot and still easily uh, activate it here for over 55 while double supporting the Empress P. So despite only playing five characters, we are really, really strong. We're going to be grabbing a tier six treasure this turn up against the Ghost. We are getting a little bit greedy uh, with this Knighthood play. And I'm also going to lock onto Polywoggle here. Kind of funny, but we do have Sting and Boomhilda. We can see that Lancelot, or uh, Hercules rather, is grabbing plus 30 attack. And that could be enough for Polywoggle to slay, especially because we're also up in XP right now. Uh, so the rest of the lobby needs to catch up and we can use that kind of kind of as an excuse to grab some more Polywoggles and do some silly stuff uh, with that. Now, my opponent with a Lightning Dragon is pretty well set up against us, uh, though they're still the ghost. They're still not super powerful and we're able to find the win there. So not a huge deal. And then Hercules is going to give us Pandora's box. We've been so lucky this whole game. Figure might as well roll the die one more time here with the Pandora's box. What do you think is the luckiest tier seven treasure that we could grab at this stage of the game? Um, Honestly, I mean, we, we get the luckiest treasure. I don't want to spoil it right this second, but if you think in your head, what is the luckiest tier seven treasure that I could get? Well, that's the one that I'm going to get. Still going to go for the polywoggle strategies on this turn. A little bit of a hodgepodge of a board here that might lead you to think that I'm going to be getting the world tree. Though I've brought this up before in the past, the world tree isn't actually the best treasure for Empress P strategies. Um, yeah, it's just not super synergistic. For that, you more want Mirror Mirror, uh, but I think the treasure that we're going to wind up getting is still a little bit better, um, though honestly, they're they're both good options. Earthquake for my opponent is going to mean that we don't get the Slay with the Polywoggle, but we still have absolutely massive supports that should be able to take my opponent down here. Uh, they do have a Pumpkin, actually, though, so I think that we should lose this one. Yeah, we don't have that much health on our supports. We'll take a little bit of damage, Again, that one wasn't unlucky. My opponent just had the pumpkin, and uh, yeah, you can see they were supposed to win that one with a 99% uh, to win. So when somebody has that good of odds, they should be winning the combats regardless, but we find Holy Grail. That was the treasure that we grabbed uh, that was super lucky. Then we find another good boy. Uh, so overall, yeah, just a really, really fantastic game. It, it's uh, I'm just trying to be right now as powerful as I can going into this Holy Grail turn because uh, we're going to be able to... We could potentially change our whole board. Like, we could sell off this Burning Beard and uh, just go into that. I am still hanging on to the Hercules and the Burning Beard. Sometimes I will sell things off going into a Holy Grail turn, but we might still wind up playing trees. So I wanna hang on to the Burning Beard and then the Hercules, we could either True Love's Kiss or Evil Twin or Shard of the Ice Queen. So I'm gonna hang on to that for a second as well. Probably honestly should have just sold it off, made more room for uh, other cards to purchase on this Holy Grail turn. 
in my hand because we're going to be buying a bunch of stuff right now. Uh, first things first, we are going to grab another good boy. That gives us another tier six treasure. And I'm just going to grab Phoenix Feather. That seems good enough to me. Echo Wood also really, really good in this good boy strategy. And it looks like that's where we're going. We find another Empress P and it looks like we are looking to play just a good boy Empress P strategy. I find another good boy. Uh, so overall things are pretty good. I should be selling off the Burning Beard and the Hercules probably at this point and that would have allowed me to pick up nine sea terrors but there's so much other stuff going on in my mind. I passed by two Pigomorphs and a Good Boy, and I wasn't planning on Pigomorphing, but now that I've seen and passed two, I am kind of thinking maybe I do want a Pigomorph here. I'm going to go for a Treasure, take the Krampus Slay low on time, so I just Pigomorph here up against Potion Master. Only one more combat to go, likely after this one, uh, so I just want to be as strong as I can at this stage of the game, and here is where I end up, and I think that this is probably good enough for the most part. Uh, it is a little bit awkward that both my good boy and my upgraded Empress P attack into that rotten apple wood, and it's actually really awkward. It's awkward enough that I lose the combat, and I lose a 99 percenter. So despite this one being pretty lucky for whatever reason, I am cursed when I try to play Evella. There's just something about it that doesn't work. I can get super, super lucky and then just have it all taken away from me. This was not a third place comp, but it is still a third place finish. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm No Lux Given. Peace.